What you guys got another video here for you. In this one, we're taking a look here that turns on and then turns off immediately. So as soon as you power on the computer, your fans may spin up a little bit and then all of a sudden it turns off. So that's what we're gonna troubleshoot in this video. Someone requested this video, so I thought I'd make a video on showing you the ways of troubleshooting uh, this problem. So first off, we're gonna start off down here with the power supply. This is the power that is gonna be coming in from the power outlet, from the wall, and then delivered into the PC, and then step down to 12 volts from here. So basically what we need to do is determine whether this power supply is bad, and the power coming into the power supply uh, is okay. So you can check the kettle lead that comes in, which is your cable that comes into the power supply, and then also check to make sure that the power supply is okay. Once you've determined that the power supply is okay, you can normally use something for quick reference, i.e. a brand new power supply, and try that. Or you can actually use one of these little devices that you can see on the screen right now, which will help you determine whether the power supply is bad. Now, it's not a 100% foolproof method. It just gives you an inkling that the power supply is delivering good, clean power to the a computer but it's a good starting point especially if you're not a PC repair tech and you don't have uh, power supplies lying around you can always get one of those or people normally have those lying around so that's the first thing to do the next thing to do is once we know we've got good power we want to check the motherboard make sure there's any lights on the board that are lighting up and uh, next up is your cables so check the uh, 24 pin cable Make sure that is seated in correctly. Make sure you've got the CPU power connected in here as well. And if you're using extension cables for your power supply, remove those uh, like the colored cables, extension cables, remove the extension cable and plug the main power cable straight into the 24 pin just to make sure the extension cable hasn't let go and broken. Uh, and this way we can determine whether that is an issue that you're getting power to the board. So basically, once you've done that, you can then check to make sure all the cables are plugged in correctly and they're firmly seated into all of the ports what you're using, which is your 24 pin, your CPU connector. Uh, make sure all those are correctly plugged in, okay? Okay, so next up, what you wanna do is remove any non-essential components from the computer or that's plugged into the computer. So if you've got any USB uh, hubs plugged in or any of that stuff remove them and try to power it up and see whether you've get any success if you can remove any non-essential uh, cards that you may have inside here like audio cards or even if you have another graphics card or remove the graphics card and use onboard graphics then that's another way of sort of getting rid of the non-essential parts that we can then test to make sure that everything is okay so once you've done that, you want to move on to the CPU. Now you want to make sure that you've got uh, the compound on the CPU. So remove the uh, heatsink and make sure that compound is on the CPU there. Another thing you can do is put power to the unit and keep your finger on the uh, CPU itself. And what you're doing this is very simply for a few seconds, like two or three seconds, and then turning it off. And what you want to do is see whether that CPU is getting hot. And if it is, then normally the CPU is working correctly. It's working okay. But normally I would uh, start to check the heatsink as well to make sure the heatsink is not fouled or failing. If this is failing, then it will come on. Uh, the CPU will get too hot and then it will shut down. And that's normally a common issue. Uh, it also could be a faulty CPU that you've got, which in, in all my years, you see a few of them, but there's, it's not uh, very common, but it can happen where the CPU fails, okay? So just check that and make sure the CPU is not failing or the heatsink is not bad. So check your compound, check the heatsink, and check the CPU, and make sure the CPU is getting hot. If it's getting hot, it's getting power to the board, to the CPU, and then you can move on to the next uh, step which is the memory. You wanna check all the memory here. You can see we've got four slots in here uh, fully populated. You wanna remove all of these from the computer, leave one stick in uh, dim slot one, and then power it up and see if it works. 
If it does, then you know you've got a dodgy uh, stick. If that doesn't work, then put one of the other sticks in and also check uh, another slot on the board to make sure one of the slots on the board is not fouled. If that's okay, make sure uh, the uh, RAM is all checked and working okay. You can run mem tests and stuff like that, but honestly, once you know you've got a bad stick, you can replace that stick. But mem test, again, is another video. I've done videos on that. You have to do long tests for long hours of testing all the memory just time consuming as a pc repair tech you're not going to be doing that in the workshop it just takes far too long um, so you want to really sort of diagnose whether it's a, a memory issue or not and just make sure they're seated all properly uh, inside there clean the connectors make sure the connectors are clean and make sure the ports are clean what you're plugging them into and you should be okay so moving on to uh, the next thing, which is overheating. Is there any overheating issues, whether it's getting hot and then shutting down? This might be more than five seconds. The problem I'm generally talking about is when you comes on about three to four seconds or five seconds and it shuts off. That's the normal common problem. If it's getting to like 20 to 30 seconds and then shuts off, it could be an over overheating issue. And you may need to check to make sure that you've got no dust buildup in all the fans and everything else. But normally that's related to something else. So overheating could be your heatsink that has failed and of course making the system crash. So just make sure that your uh, heatsink is working correctly. So moving on to the motherboard itself, which is probably the most hardest part to diagnose unless you are um, a specialist where you can check uh, the board itself. But if you're not, then you're going down to the walls, the motherboard level where you can check for bad caps, which is very rare nowadays because most of the caps are sealed. So it's not going to be uh, caps or anything like that, but it's probably shorting. Just make sure it's not grounded out or shorting if you've just built the system and uh, make sure it's not grounded out on back of the, the case here as well. Now, it won't be a power button issue because obviously uh, you're getting power to the uh, computer, but it could be a faulty cable or something like that. So you want to make sure that uh, it's not a cable issue going towards uh, the actual uh, board there, uh, which is powering on uh, the computer. Next thing to check is electrical shorts on the board. Make sure there's no burning or no sort of burning marks on the back or the top of the board. So you need to take everything out and examine the board and make sure everything is okay there. Next up, we're going to be looking at the CMOS battery. The CMOS battery is buried underneath here. Sometimes it's down the bottom here, but it's right up underneath the graphics card on this. And sometimes uh, you need to reset the CMOS. There may be a jumper somewhere or reset button for the CMOS. Do that and uh, that hopefully might resolve your problems. It may be uh, need resetting. If you have an old PC, and uh, the PC is quite old. Sometimes replacing the CMOS battery will help fire this uh, PC back up into place. This is a new build, so that is not the issue. But obviously, if you have got CMOS issues, you want to reset the CMOS and also then um, replace the battery if it's an older type computer. You can test the battery with battery testers, which you can see on the screen here, or you can just go and purchase new CMOS batteries, which I'll post on the screen as well. You can get them on Amazon, they're pretty cheap to go. Once you've done all that, you should then work out what is your problem with your computer. You should then suddenly realize it's either a RAM issue, um, heatsink issue, CPU issue, a motherboard issue, or whether it's a power supply issue. You should then be able to fully uh, understand where the problem lies. And that's basically how you can troubleshoot very quickly and diagnose the computer that turns on and then turns off immediately. So we're talking within three to five seconds. It's quite a common problem and uh, they are some of the uh, pitfalls that uh, cause that problem to happen, okay? Anyway, that's gonna be about it for this video. Uh, sorry, I can't show you the process itself because that would be massively time consuming. And of course, I don't wanna tear down this computer just to test something that is not uh, got a problem with. So, but basically just follow through what I said and start off down with the power supply and move on to the components in the order I've said. And you should be able to find out what the problem is and you should be up and running in no time at all. So just bear that in mind, guys. Any other solutions that you may have that might help people, 
put them in the comments section below and hopefully people will read those and it will resolve your issues. But if you do follow these sequences, you should be able to diagnose and troubleshoot your problem and be up and running in no time at all because I've been doing this a long time and that's basically how you're going to troubleshoot an, a problem like this. Anyway, that's going to be about it for this video. Uh, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Let me know in the comment section below whether you'd like this type of uh, format of video as well, whether you find it useful. If not, then let me know and I won't make them anymore, but I just need to know exactly what you guys want to see and I'll do my best to make those videos for you. Anyway, have a great weekend and I shall see you again for another video real soon. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the big red subscribe button on my YouTube channel and hit the bell notification button next to that to be notified when we upload new videos.